Did the Lakers make the right decision with this AD extension? Look, first, between Jalen Brown and now Anthony Davis, it's like money, 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 yeah. money, raining in <laughs> everywhere. Did the Lakers make the right decision? Absolutely. Now, while the Lakers are in the midst of a short championship window with LeBron at the age of 38, they don't want to jeopardize the position of this franchise for the foreseeable future. That means you extend Anthony Davis. And I understand the qualms with AD. Personally, as someone myself who has dealt with, like, nagging injuries, trying to play complete seasons, the reality is when AD is on the floor and when he is healthy, your team can be anybody. When he goes for, like, 25 points, you win around 65 to 70% of your games, which means you're a firm top four team in a stacked West. You have a chance to make the finals as we saw them get to the Western Conference finals. And these are the numbers that I break down on NBA today. When AD is on the floor defensively, the Lakers had the best defense in the NBA. Now we all remember that defensive energy, that rim protection, that verticality that AD brought to the bubble lent, uh, ends up in a championship. He brought that to the Western finals this past year. So when he's on the floor, their defense is number one in the NBA. Now, when he's off the floor, their defense ranks 22nd. He's also fourth in the league offensively in points in the restricted area. So you look at those numbers, you hope that he's there for at least 65 to 70 percent of your games, which means you win hopefully 65 to 70 percent of your games. And then you absolutely make this decision to extend AD with the idea that no matter what happens to LeBron James, over the next few years. We all know his goal is to play with Bronny in the next few years. No matter what happens with LeBron, you have someone that is the cornerstone of your franchise. And AD can capably be that. Now, I know health is a question, but nonetheless, his talent, when he is healthy, is not. So making this decision by Rob Polinka and company was the right one. After the bubble championship, he waited about a week before he signed that five-year extension. This time, he didn't deliberate or delay at all. He signed the extension when he became eligible right away. And I think, Shanae, you're right. It's win-win for both sides. For Anthony Davis, not letting any sort of prospect of another injury come into play, which would affect his potential earnings, getting it done now before you put yourself at risk for that, a smart move financially. For the Lakers, this ensures stability for the next half decade or so because the nuclear option here would be, let's say you let Anthony Davis exercise that player option he has, hits free agency in 2024. Then if LeBron James wants to leave after this season or if he ends up retiring, then what are you left with? I think that it's smart in terms of the finances for AD to get his money right now. He's proven he is one of the top defenders, one of the top players in the NBA. Can he stay healthy? Well, at least he's able to get that financial security before he's tested in that regard in 2023-2024 season. And I think for the Lakers, it gives them more flexibility to continue building down the line. So win-win all around, in my perspective. Shanae, should the Clippers extend Kawhi? What do they do with someone we haven't seen a ton of, quite frankly? frankly, in this uniform. Now, should they extend him for the numbers that we're seeing with AD and numbers we're seeing with Jalen Brown? I think that's like more of where they're at. And I'm a pro athlete, so I'm here about, like, I'm all about people getting their money. So I would say mm -hmm. get the max if you can. But the reality is the Clippers have to extend Kawhi Leonard because this is the closest that the Clippers have been to contention to what, like, my lob city days of my youth that I love, Blake Griffin and Chris Paul, they're close. Last year, I had them as my favorites if they were able to stay healthy in the West. That's how good they are. That's how rare getting a tandem of Paul George and Kawhi Leonard on the perimeter on both ends is. That's how lethal they are. They're also historically the last few years with this duo have been one, one of the best and deepest teams in the NBA when healthy. You don't just walk away from the prospects of that. But I definitely know that this is a tricky one because those two stars, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, have only played in, what, 41% of their games together. Mm -hmm. I know it's very hard to trust his health, Kawhi's health, Kawhi's availability. But there's one thing that I do trust. I was actually, like, putting my ear to the ground. It's Coach T. Lou. Because at USA uh, training camp, Coach said that Kawhi is healthy and on pace to be exactly where he needs to be. I'm here in L.A., We've heard a lot of rumblings about Kawhi hopefully being, you know, back for a majority of the season. But most importantly, we've been hearing rumblings from owner Steve Ballmer about their new state-of-the-art arena. You cannot cut the ribbon to that arena and not have superstars in the building to pack out that, that whole court and that environment, especially in Los Angeles. When healthy Kawhi is a superstar, I'm trusting the process. I'm trusting Coach T. Lou. And most importantly, I think the Clippers, they're going to have to see this entire plan to fruition before they try to rebuild 
while they have like fresh ground on their new arena. Speaking of trusting the process, for people out there who look at the Kawhi Leonard experiment in LA and say, okay, well, it's time to blow this thing up. It's time to start over and potentially go that route, win 20 games a year, become the Philadelphia 76ers, and try to rebuild your team that way. It's not going to happen. Number one, we've gotten no indication from the Clippers Brain Trust that they are willing to do that. And with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, Effectively having, you know, identical contracts, $46 million salary that they're due this year. It's $49 million on a player option next year. You have to extend Kawhi Leonard in the circumstance because you're not a championship team without him. If you end up thinking you could blow this thing up, the team that you'd be trading Kawhi Leonard to would not be giving you any top five picks. And you don't have any picks of your own if you're the Los Angeles Clippers. So go root for another team if that's the route that you want to go here. Kawhi could end up being slowed down by injuries in his 30s. We obviously hope not. We want to see him out there because he's a two-time finals MVP. He's proven he can be the best player on a championship caliber team. Injuries have slowed that process, but this is a gamble that the Los Angeles Clippers absolutely unequivocally have to take to keep the door open in the Western Conference if they want to be able to contend. I just, I'm kind of with the Om Young Masuk reporting here. I can understand why they're not trying to rush into this decision right away. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.